What's up everyone? This is Hunter from the future. So some of you might be asking, he just told us about this new AI game. How in the world has he finished it already? And to you I say, hold your horses, I'm getting to that. So originally, whenever we had this game idea, Daniel had an idea that he wanted to pursue a in-house game jam. Kind of a one versus one thing where we would both separately make a game and you guys would vote on the results to see who would win. Unfortunately, Daniel was not able to finish his game. So all we have are the footage from me creating my version for the game jam. So just keep that in mind going forward that this video was intended to be two people participating in a game jam, but we weren't able to do it that way. Uh, I promise we're gonna get to the point of this video real soon. Uh, just while editing, I needed to take a second um, and apologize for two things. Number one, I'm not going to be able to do the cool speech bubble. It's just too taxing on my computer and it is lengthening my editing time by at least three times as long. And secondly, I want to apologize for the low effort involved in this one. So it might not be as interesting to watch as the last video was, but it's because after finishing the game jam, I was just so brain dead. I'm actually missing one of the clips where I explain what's going on and how I implemented some of the features. And now with getting ready for Christmas, it's just a lot to deal with and I don't have the energy to put into this video like I should. So I want to apologize for that. What's up everyone? We're going to do something a little bit differently with this video. Daniel had an idea to kind of hold a semi-private game jam between the two of us. I think the intention is that we're both very artistic leaning devs. And so we spend way too much time working on assets and not enough time working on mechanics and never finish anything because of it. So I think the goal is to kind of get us out of our comfort zones while also having a little bit of friendly competition. The only rules that we had to follow for this were it must be created within the Friday to Sunday window. So three days to do this. It must adhere to the theme one room. And lastly, we don't make any of the game assets for this game. Now, if we need to make UI or something like that because we can't find what we need or if we have the spare time, that's okay. Uh, but for the most part, we need to avoid making any art assets for the game. It's all about the gameplay and the mechanics of it. So my idea for the one room, he and I kind of spitballed back and forth to each other a little bit one day. And I just could not shake this idea of a gladiator bullet hell game. Now, the gist of it would be you're stuck in the arena, but the thing that got me thinking that, that it might be kind of cool is a melee bullet hell, adding like one extra layer of challenge to it by all of the enemies would be, would have ranged or spiral or circle attacks that you would have to avoid. The key would be that you would have to get close enough to them to actually attack them. You're at a disadvantage because you're melee. Now, I don't know if a melee bullet hell has ever been done before. I just thought it was an interesting idea that I could give a go. And maybe I end up changing it by the end of it. I'm not sure. Maybe what you ended up playing is not, is not the concept that I have right now. But that's the goal. Uh, I might end up like having the melee attack, having kind of a, a shockwave effect so that it is extends just a little bit longer so that you don't have to be right on top of the enemy in order to successfully land a hit. Uh, I'm not sure yet. We'll see how far I can actually get in. Let's go see what happens. All right, it's game jam day. So I went to bed early last night thinking that I would get up early and get a head start on today, but I ended up sleeping late anyway. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is get all of my assets imported in. Once I do that, I really want to get started on player movement. So first thing that I'm going to work on is trying to implement a player controller, get my movement down pat, make sure it feels good. And then maybe I'll start working on some enemy AI or something. Alright, so day two, uh, I've gotten up, 
got my shower, take care of the dogs, fit eight, hung out with the wife. So now I'm ready to get started. Um, yesterday I spent way too much time polishing little features and stuff. So I got almost nothing done. So today I'm gonna try to sit down and implement as many things as I possibly can because I've still got to think about the fact that I've still got to do audio, I've still got to do menus and stuff just to make the game function like it should. So uh, I've got a lot that I need to get done today so I'm just gonna get my head down and try to get as much done as possible. So for you guys, enjoy while I make it look easy by time-lapsing through everything. All right, so I was getting really frustrated with how little progress I had actually made in comparison to what I still need to get done um, because I have been spending a ton of time fighting with different elements. So like the main thing that I took forever fighting with was this, this health bar system and um, when the player takes damage, oh, I moved it, hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. I want to say it's on the enemy. Yeah. And causing the player to take damage, but also animate whenever it takes damage. Um, just had a ton of issue with both of those two things. So it took me way too long to implement a health bar and him doing an animation when he takes damage. But once I finally got that down, I started working on the bat uh, and its movement AI and went through a lot of that um so we've got this set up here for that so that it'll move back and forth at random intervals and it can take from any state and move to a different state so uh and i actually think i'm gonna adjust some of the timing on that but let's switch over here i'll show you guys what i have so far So I can move around, bat moves around, and if I get too close to the bat, I take damage. And there is also an invincibility window so that you won't take damage for a second after you get hit. And if you die, it resets. Now I'm not sure why, but he does do this take damage animation as soon as the game starts but so that's what I have at the moment I still need to set up an attack for him for the main character uh, I would also really like to set up some kind of maybe a sonar attack for the bat because I do still want this to be a bullet hell experience and I've just failed to deliver on that so far but I think that's going to be good enough for now and I will talk to you guys tomorrow All right, so last day of the game jam. I've got a lot to get done today. So I'm just gonna get straight to it and I will talk to you guys in a bit.
All right, so I actually did get finished. Um, I did so many things yesterday. I'm not even sure where I left off for the last recording, but I'm gonna try to break y'all or break down everything that I did and bring y'all through all the final steps of everything that, <laughs> that I didn't have time to finish, but what I did get done. Uh, and I think it's pretty fun. So let's go take a look at it. All right, so I actually got quite a bit done. The problem is, I, a bunch of it is broken. So, I, out of example, I have this this title screen for the game, but look, and freaking the button disappeared. Um, but not only that, when you press play, and I apologize if this is loud, because uh, it's fixing to start some music. But it says button on there and I can't figure out how to get it off so that's one of many things that I was able to set up and do but it's very broken and I don't I didn't have the time to worry about the little things in it that were broken and weren't working um, so we've got we've got a main menu we've got music we've got music in the game uh, and I've got let me switch scenes here Alright, so I've got a few other things that I worked on and that I added. I added a score counter. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else in here? I don't think so. Uh, I added some stuff to the bat. Uh, oh, he has an attack now. So he does not play an animation like he should. But he does spawn an object, but that's also broken because, and I'll show you here in a minute, when he spawns it to the right, it looks like it's supposed to, but when he spawns it to the left, it doesn't flip to face the other direction, and I couldn't figure out how to fix it, and I didn't have time to worry about it, so I moved on, and so the animation to the opposite side just isn't working. Uh, I was never able to implement an attack for the bat, but what I did do is I set it up so that the bat, every time it's killed, it spawns two more. So you were just constantly finding more and more bats, and I slightly increased the range that a bat detects and the speed at which it moves. So it makes it a little more hectic where you're constantly running from the bats and trying to attack the bats at the same time. Now, the way they spawn in, it's not random at all, and they pile up on top of each other, but it is what it is. It, it functions, which was the main goal that I needed to be able to happen here. So, I think that's mostly everything. Let me see here. I might can show you some of the enemy script here that I put. Um... We already looked at that. I wonder if we looked at the damage stuff. I might have shown you that. Um, oh yeah, this is the sequence of everything that the bat does once it's actually killed. And that's it spawning two more bats. Um, oh, here's the projectile. This is all of that information. So, it colliding it actually spawning the object increasing the score all that kind of stuff so and I ran into a few different problems um, whenever I went to export the game uh, and the gist was that I hadn't updated the visual scripting thing to the most the most uh, updated version once I updated the version though it ended up uploading to itch.io okay. Now, oh, another thing that I did, I'll have to show you in game because yeah, I've got it set to play all maximized. Um, in itch.io, and I don't know if this is some of the settings that I had done or what, but I had set everything to 1920 by 1080. And when you open the game in itch, you have to full screen it to be able to see everything. And 
In order to exit full screen, it's the escape button. Well, I also set the pause menu to the escape button. So you have to escape from full screen and then press escape again to pause it. So it doesn't look very good, but I'll show you all what it looks like and play the game here. Again, I apologize if it's really loud. So there's the pause, and again, all the buttons say button, and I don't know why. And they say it in the full game too. Uh, but this is the pause screen that I made, showing that you can use a controller or mouse and keyboard, and you can use WSD or arrow keys to be able to do it. Um, and oh, I didn't mean to do that. But it's it boils a lot of it boils down to how you type everything up. And for those interested. Let me see if I can. Okay, I'll go to the player here. Um, player controller. So whenever you get the input, instead of calling specifically left arrow key, right arrow key, or WASD, Unity has it set up where you can do horizontal instead. And so any time any of the inputs that qualify as a horizontal or vertical input, Unity automatically knows and tells the code to act. So I didn't have to implement a bunch of different versions in order to be able to get it so that a controller would work with the game. So that's a cool little neat feature that I love that Unity does in its visual scripting. But let me show you real quick the animation and what killing the bat does. So see to the right, but when it goes to the left, it's still facing the wrong direction. Also, for some reason, when you kill a bat, it goes up by two instead of by, and then see that one went up by one more. So the scoring is not as accurate as it should be. Things start to get crazy for, once you start to kill quite a few, uh, the farthest I've gotten was 160. Shannon broke the game and got a score of like 210. So yeah, see, I died. And it just restarts. Um, now all the buttons do work. You can quit the game. You can go to the main menu and all that stuff. So that's great. Uh, I think that's everything. I don't think I have anything else to show you guys. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to go through this with me. Let me know what you think down in the comments of the game. Uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of terrible, but it ended up still being kind of fun in my opinion. So uh, there should be a link down in the description for you to be able to play the game. Um, go check it out. Let me know what you think. And next time we should be able to pick up where we left off with the devlogs and stuff. So I will see you guys in the next video.